This episode is sponsored by Manscaped. It's Tuesday, folks. It's Tuesday. And Steve Borthwick has announced his side to face Eddie Jones's Japan on Saturday already. Have the mind games begun before this one's even started. Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our summer test series. So hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now, today I'm going to be looking at the side Steve Borthwick has selected and try to sort of dissect his, uh, his thinking generally and then dive into each position as well. But let's talk about that. I woke up this morning, bleary-eyed, as typical, checked my phone, bad habit, but I do it. And my Twitter feed was full of the England selections and I thought I'd slept in for like two days or something and it was actually Thursday. But no, Steve Borthwick has fired the first shot. I mean... It's all these media games. I'm not even sure whether it makes a whole load of difference to the team. But, I mean, maybe you just like use it psychologically. Like, we're getting in first. We're going to be on the front foot this entire trip. Could be that way. You know, these, these tricks do, do count. But I don't pay too much attention to them myself, really. Okay, let's look at selection overall. And Borthwick has used this word... Uh, over and over and over and it's consistency he really wants consistency of selection he really values partnerships time together in the shirt and he recognizes that you can't just get that at England level you need those partnerships and understanding from club level as well so the selection he's gone for it's no great surprise um, it absolutely backs uh, his, his theme of consistency now, you go on a summer tour and there's lots of ways to think about this. Are we developing players? Um, are we looking to bring people through in areas where we're maybe not as deep or not as strong? Or are we just going to play to win? Truth is, it's almost always somewhere in the middle. There'll be decisions that will be influenced one way and some slightly the other. But I think primary focus here for Borthwick is picking the best England side he can to go and take on Japan on this what is a very short tour so they're going to need to get um, some understanding and some flow back as quickly as possible following on from the Six Nations. So I think his prime focus is playing to win um, but he'll obviously be looking to bring some people through as he does that as well. So yeah the development and I think he looks at this on a really individualised basis. Which player needs what? What player can cope with what scenarios at the moment? So we've seen him take different approaches with different players. For example, Ethan Root uh, was thrown straight in at the start of the Six Nations and, and performed really well uh, for a couple of games there. People like Faye Waboso and Chandler Cullingham South were on the bench initially and then Waboso got his chance. And when we get down to it, we'll see that Chandler Cullingham South is getting his chance to start his first test this week as now. So... I think it's uh, horses to courses. I think he looks at what he's got, looks at the player individually. He obviously clearly talks to these players on a really regular basis. Uh, he knows exactly what's going on in their head. He often quotes, or not quotes, but describes how players are with him and what he feels that players can bring. So um, there's development um, and you look at some of the players that have been left out of this match day squad and you'll see a lot of them are the younger players, least experienced players. And then the last factor I would say is how fresh these players are. Are they rested? Do they need a game? Um, all these factors are going to play in to each of these individual selections. But I think it's, it's kind of from the top down, really. Consistency, playing to win, then looking at development and who needs what. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to announce that Smooth Sack Summer is officially upon us. When you're playing in the summer sun, make sure you're groomed from pubes to bum. Thanks to our friend at Manscaped, you can make this season your smoothest yet. The Performance Package 5.0 Ultra is the ultimate bundle to keep your boys downstairs cool while looking hot. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer, Get 20% off and free shipping when you go to manscaped.com and use the code TARP20. That's T-A-R-P-20. Summertime and the trimming is easy. Have you really done any male grooming if you haven't nicked a nutsack? I know I have and I have to say I've never felt more confident thrashing through the bushes than with the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra. Every man knows how scary it can get when going for a close shave below the belt. That's why I trust Manscaped for all my sensitive areas. The Manscaped Performance Package 5.0 Ultra has everything you need to prepare that summer bod. 
The fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. We also have dual LED spotlights to provide contrast on multiple skin tones, three length setting combs, and oh, did I mention this trimmer is waterproof too? Beach, lake, or shower, this razor will devour even the strongest pubes. Now that you have the perfect haircut, use Manscaped's liquid formulations to keep that freshness, even at the hottest summer barbecues. The Crop Soother After Shave Lotion and Crop Preserver Anti Chafe Ball Deodorant. Once they touch your sack, you'll never go back. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code TARP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code TARP20, T-A-R-P, the Amateur Rugby Podcast 20 at manscaped.com. It's smooth sack summer, boys. Get on board or got left behind. Okay, back to the show. Into the forwards and we're starting with Rod, George and Cole in the front row, Itoji and Martin. In the back row, China Cunningham South, like I said, his first start for England after some seriously impressive performances from the bench, along with Sam Underhill off the back of his his Prem final performance, which was out of this world. And Ben Earl, who is not playing in his... Uh, his club form wasn't as strong as his recent England form. So be interesting to see whether getting him back in a England shirt and see if his form returns. It's entirely possible. A few people to pick out here. Bevan Rudd. Hasn't started a game for England for quite some time. Hasn't actually been in the squad for quite some time either. Um, but a very, very mobile loose head. A very decent scrummager, but it's more about his skills, more about his mobility, I would say, in this fixture. And I'd say that really suits a game against Japan. There probably aren't too many selections, I would say, that, that would, you know, would be that case here. But I think this one in particular screams to me He's a good guy to play against Japan with. Dan Cole, I mean, uh, probably written off by loads of people after the Six Nations as that might be the end for him, but he's going on and he starts another game for England. Fabulous stuff. Itoji and Martin in the second row could be, you know, a big partnership for England for a long time. And I've gone through the back row as there. I think this is a really solid selection. It, it backs up all the all the factors that I mentioned earlier. Just the, for the people that have missed out, Finn Baxter, very young, uh, looks like he'll potentially not play on this tour aside from injuries uh, if he's not going to play in this game. Same with Joe Hayes and probably the same for Gabriel Ogre as well. But they will learn so much being on this trip. They will learn so much by being in the environment that I think it will be good for them down the road. Uh, also missing out on selection, Alex Coles, Who's, who's done one well for England whenever he's played. One of Northampton's key players, uh, but doesn't get the nod here with Charlie Yules on the bench in the second row. Sub spot, who has had a fantastic season and is probably playing the best rugby of his life. In the back row, Ethan Roots and Alex, Alex Dombrand uh, also miss out with, uh, Ch with Tom Curry, excuse me taking the spot on the bench. And I'm pretty sure he only came on tour to stop his brother getting that spot again. Poor Ben Curry, not in a match day squad once more. Um, but I'm sure some of these guys will get chances throughout the tour. Into the backs. And we've got Alex Mitchell and Marcus Smith at halfback. This was, these were the key selections, I think, that most people had the most question marks about. Ollie Lawrence and Henry Slade in the centre, continuing their fine form at the end of the Six Nations. Tommy Freeman and Faye Waboso again, and Furbank at fullback. That three-quarter line um, from 12 outwards anyway, unchanged. Uh, and I think they're really looking for looking to get in some consistency in that selection and getting them working together even better. So much potential there, both sides of the ball. Now, in terms of the halfbacks, uh, big choices, I think. If you're going with Alex Mitchell, then you are really committing to a running game here. You're saying that that is our DNA. That is how we want to play first and foremost. And that's the situation. Because if you're picking on form, you've got to say Ben Spencer's probably had the better end of the season. Uh, Mitchell's been absolutely wonderfully industrious and never stopped trying. And, and lots of things did go for him, but lots didn't as well. And then the other option, of course, is then at fly half where you go... Marcus Smith or Finn Smith. Marcus who can bust the game open 
uh, the flick of a switch versus Finn, who's a bit more methodical, a bit more get the back line moving um, kind of a player. And my opinion was that you wouldn't go Mitchell and Smith because it's just a little bit too wildfire. There's not enough control in that half-back pairing, I don't think. Um, I would have gone... Uh, I would have gone Mitchell and Finn Smith or um, Ben Spencer and Marcus Smith because then you get a better balance. But this is wildly exciting. Um, it means that England are going to be looking to move the ball a heck of a lot. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big fan of that. But it's interesting there in terms of balance, especially when you look at the bench and see that we've got another runner at scrum half in Harry Randall on the bench as well. I say in almost every England video, I'm a big Ben Spencer fan. I think he's a complete number nine. But it looks like he's only there really for when England are going to play a more considered game, a more territorial game, um, if he can't get in ahead of Harry Randall here. Um, anyway, uh, Finn Smith also on the bench. Uh, and Tom Roebuck, who will make his debut if he gets on or when he gets on, I'm sure I'll get on, who has been doing great things for South Sharks on the right wing this season. Missing out Ben Spencer, as I already mentioned, Fraser Dingwall, who's been so good at club level. Oh, just wondering whether he, it might just take him longer to step up to international level, but he's so effective. Post-carry meters, I think he had the best in the Prem final last week. He does things that you don't expect, really. Um, then Luke North Moore as well, missed out. Great attacking player, but I want to see more defensively from him. Premiership's top try scorer, Ollie Slytome, couldn't get a look in. Uh, along with Freddie Stewart, who I think if he's not starting, he's never going to be picked on the bench because he just doesn't bring a big enough point of difference. And another fullback, Joe Carpenter, who's also been great for sale. Okay. What do we think of this team? What are we looking for then? Important words from Jamie George and George Martin this week who kind of echoed each other in saying that they're not starting for nothing now. That clearly was the case at the start of the Six Nations. They felt like the World Cup was something completely separate. They were starting a new project and now they're some way through that project. They've got pillars of their defence in place. They've shown they can attack with verve and width and accuracy. So it's exciting, but they both sort of said that also that they're a long way from where they are. It's a good start. Henry Slade this week also excited about the defensive challenge Playing against Japan, a team that like to go wide, wide, plenty of width, plenty of exciting players. He's really excited by that, but also excited about where England's attacking game might go. Having really focused on it halfway through the Six Nations, it really switched into gear pretty quickly, considering they hadn't spent a lot of time on it up to that point. I just see this as a, the strongest 15 that uh, he could have picked on the, on the day. Um, I think... Looking at it, there doesn't seem to be too many players there that need a rest. Uh, they all seem to be selected if they're available. So good to go. Now then, the Eddie factor. It's taken up almost no column inches, I would say, in the UK press. And for me, rightly so. Like, it's it just noise now. And I don't really pay too much attention to anything he says. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a factor for me. It doesn't seem to be a factor for any of the players that were involved in the... Eddie Jones era, so crack on. One last thing, it's not being broadcast, which is quite a strange thing. No uh, big broadcaster has picked it up, so it's going to be free to watch on Rugby Pass TV. I think you need to set up an account or something like that, but, but you don't have to pay anything. And the other reason why maybe it hasn't been picked up is because it's 6.50am on Saturday morning. Okay, that's it. That's it in the can. That's what I think about this England selection. I'm excited. I think this could be a wildly attractive game in the heat of Japan on Saturday morning, our time. But what do you think? Do you think this is the right team to take England forward in this fixture? Do you think this is the right team to uh, for consistency, for looking to win, for developing players? Uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a friendly conversation. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next and do not forget to get out and play.